IAS. I am Tirumurugan. I will be teaching anthropology. Anthropology is the study of man through time and space. Anthropos in Greek means of humans. We know logos means studies. Though anthropology is not a very popular subject at university level, but it is a very popular option for civil services main examination. Every year, at least there will be one or two in the top 10 of the final list of UPSC examination, of the civil services examinations, who have opted for anthropology as their optional subject. What makes the subject so interesting and fascinating? Because anthropology is the study of what makes us human beings and how we are different from other animals, other organisms. How we are capable of making our own culture. How we are making our society more livable. How we are capable of minimizing conflicts in our society. Anthropology is a holistic subject. We study about all the aspects of human beings, not just the socio-cultural aspect. We study about uh, the biological aspects of uh, human beings, which we call it as uh, physical anthropology or biological anthropology. We also study the socio-cultural aspects of human beings, about the society, about the culture. This is socio-cultural anthropology. And you have linguistic anthropology where we study about the languages, about the linguistic aspect, about structural linguistics. And uh, the most very important and interesting aspect of anthropology, the archaeological anthropology. Anthropology, see, archaeologists, they keep saying, right, my career lies in ruins. Yeah. How the study of ruins, how the study of artifacts, ecofacts, etc., which we have unearthed, allows us to reconstruct our cultural past. This is what makes the subject very interesting. Then apart from that, whatever we study here in physical anthropology, in socio-cultural anthropology, in linguistic anthropology, or in archaeological anthropology, how we can utilize this knowledge to make the human conditions better, that is applied anthropology. So these are the five broad areas where of importance in anthropology. But keep in mind, the scope of anthropology is very vast. That's what makes the subject very interesting, the variety in the subject. Uh, apart from studying what is there in the subject, we also interlink this with our uh, mythic past, our society, our culture. I'll tell you one good example. Organic evolution. Organic evolution is a very important topic in physical anthropology. The very basic assumption of organic evolution is all the organisms on earth got evolved from some other minor form, have got evolved from some other minor forms. That means we, human beings, didn't come to earth as human beings. We got evolved from some other minor forms. A dog didn't come to earth as a dog. It got evolved from some other minor form. So all the, all the organisms on the earth are an evolved product, an evolved product on the earth's surface. Even we human beings are an evolved product on the earth's surface. So this organic evolution further says that life originated under aquatic conditions. It was few nitrogen and phosphorus molecules along with few sugar it managed to combine to form RNA. RNA became DNA. DNA became a chromosome. The chromosome managed to synthesize some proteins and it managed to make a nuclei. And the nuclei managed to make a cytoplasm and finally a single cell, unicellular organism. This unicellular organism managed to accumulate or managed to attract or managed to multiply, which resulted in a multicellular organism. 
So life originated under aquatic conditions. Aquatic organisms are the first to come on air, followed by amphibians. Amphibians, right? Um, frog, turtle, these are amphibians. We know that amphibians can live both under aquatic as well as under terrestrial condition. So then came the full-fledged landed animals, which further got multiplied because of speciation, it got diverged and different organisms came to earth. And slowly, this organism, one organism among them, the human being, started building their culture, and it got evolved, 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 and down. It made this earth so beautiful. Really, right? But in fact, it is the human beings who are destroying the mother earth. Fine. This right up. You might have read even in Hindu myth. Hinduism is a popular religion in India. And there are a number of myths. One such myth is uh, the Dasha Avadar. Dasha Avadar of uh, Lord Vishnu. Ten Avadars. The first Avadar is a fish. A full-fledged lander animal. Then comes Kurma Avadar. Kurma is a turtle. It's an amphibian. Then comes uh, Varaha Avadar. Varaha Avadar. Varaha is a wild boar. That is a full fledged landed animal. Then comes uh, Narashima Avadar. Narashima is half lion and half human being. That is half animal and half human being. In fact, uh, Narashima. It symbolizes the ape stage of human evolution. See, the elements of organic evolution is found even in Hindu myth. We do not know whether this is an accident or our ancestors had knowledge about organic evolution. See, further even the elements of cultural evolution is also found in the same Dashavada, Rama and Lakshmana. We can always see them carrying a bow and arrow. Maybe it may symbolize the hunting and gathering stage of cultural evolution of human being. Then comes in Mahabharata along with Lord Krishna, Krishna's brother Balarama. We can always see him carrying a plow. This may symbolize the agriculture stage of human evolution. See, the elements of organic evolution and cultural evolution is also found in Hindu myth. So, this makes the subject very interesting. But the first look of the syllabus gives us a very, very, very wrong picture. If you just go through the syllabus, the chapter number 1.8, if you have a look at that, it's a blend of many things. The chapter number one alone, right? We have social, we have introduction to anthropology, socio-cultural anthropology, physical anthropology, archaeological anthropology. The elements of all these things were combined in the chapter number one only. I don't know what was the intention for our examiner to keep physical anthropology in chapter number one when chapter number nine to chapter number twelve deals exclusively about physical anthropology and when uh, we have one chapter which deals with uh, uh, archaeological anthropology uh, but still see what is the need for them to club this topic archaeological anthropology in chapter number one the main intention is the subject is very 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 simple very very easy and uh, if it is so easy right then everybody will start reading anthropology that is the main aim behind our uh, examiners to make the syllabus in such a way that the very first page of the syllabus is so misleading and confusing. For example, topics like uh, primate taxonomy, comparative anatomy of man and apes, skeletal changes due to erect posture and its implications. By keeping all these things in the very front page, oh my god. 
or people from even science background they feel god this seems to be a bit difficult it seems to be a bit difficult but in fact that is not the reality so most of the students most of the people who are very new to anthropology who are, who are just opted for the subject they always have one particular thing in their mind that is the science content even people from science background there's too much of science here there is taxonomy there is comparative anatomy apart from this we to study ecological anthropology human growth and development there is one small small tough few uh, small small topics in this uh, like uh, genetic factors of growth and development where we study about uh, induction about um, uh, housekeeping genes about luxury genes so this creates what is this is this going to be very tough i'm not saying that it is very easy See, it's to some extent tough only and it all depends upon who teaches you if you are doing self study then it's going to take some time but it's we are here to make this subject very very easy and uh, there is no need to have any special knowledge in science there is no need to have any special knowledge in science if you know what is a cell the metric level knowledge in science is sufficient if you know what is a bone at least you'll have some idea about genes <coughs> that there are few characters which we inherit from our parents <coughs> like skin color <coughs> hair form and texture color of the eyes sometimes even iq we inherit from our parents So if you have some idea about what is genes and how we inherit this, that is sufficient. And even if you have no idea about this, we'll be starting from the very beginning, from what is a cell, what is the structure of a DNA, so what is a chromosome, what is the function of it, what exactly does there, what do you mean by DNA <coughs> replication, what is the transcription? what is transformation what is protein synthesis at very elementary level that if a person if even if he is not having any knowledge in science he will be in a position to understand that and most importantly this is not a pure science subject and it is not expected you to write like a scientist here so we need to keep in mind what exactly is expected in anthropology science generally in layman's perspective or you can say that amount of science which a human beings is expected to know to live as a human being that that amount of science alone is sufficient here so apart from that there are many uh, so there are uh, many topics where we discuss about uh, human anatomy and it is this which make the subject very very interesting so most of us right might have uh, dreamed or might have aspired to become a doctor at your school level you might not have uh, achieved that but now this subject right when we discuss about human anatomy here it creates lot of uh, it's so interesting the uh, all those right who felt god we missed these things so we'll know we get here in the subject once again right you'll be exposed to all these things and one thing i like to tell you here there is no need to read human anatomy or human biology at uh, mbbs level so human anatomy here we discuss only in evolutionary perspective so uh, in the course of evolution there were few anatomical changes which happened in our body so in the past of uh, 4 or 5 million years ago we kept evolving 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 and uh, even our human anatomy it got evolved and we have reached this particular stage so like our backbone it was just a single arch some 2 million years ago and now we have multiple arched one 
our lower jaw technically we call this as a mandible and this mandible used to be very large and massive because some one or two million years ago when our human ancestors when they were not capable of uh, making and controlling fire homo habilis who lived some uh, two million years ago they were the first to, to make fire but even they had no control over fire they just make it after that they cannot confine that in a particular region homo erectus homo erectus were the first to make fire and who also had a knowledge about confining that fire within a particular region they had control over fire so until then our human ancestors they were not in a position to roast or heat any meat before consuming so most of the time they were forced to eat raw meat as a result they need to bite 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 and chew a lot so for this extraordinary biting and chewing they had a lower jaw lower jaw we technically call this as mandible which was so large and massive large and massive so this large and massive mandible is always stuck in the head and in the course of our evolution when we started eating processed food there is no need for us to give that extraordinary pressure now that extraordinary mastication now so as a result in the course of evolution this lower jaw became smaller 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 and down but very stiffer and stronger now so like this there are some 30 35 anatomical terms which will be discussing and how this got evolved over time evolved over time okay and there is no need to read this entire anatomy entire anatomy then the next important aspect of anthropology is the socio cultural anthropology where we discuss about uh, the society and culture we keep discussing culture 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 what is this culture according to eb taylor culture is a complex whole it's a complex whole which includes knowledge belief moral faith values customs etc which man acquires by being a member of a society so by being a member of for kerala so being born and brought up in kerala one is capable of learning malayalam correct by being a member of that society we acquire some knowledge in communication so this is culture and independently it's not possible for somebody to make their own culture because the basic aspect of culture is culture is learned and culture keeps evolving culture this is a very important aspect of culture that is culture is dynamic culture keeps changing and nobody can think about uh, conserving this culture there are number of uh, cultural cults, uh, conservation is now right we just want to conserve the culture conserve the tradition it is not uh, practically possible because everything keeps changing maybe in the last 20 25 years itself right you might have seen a number of aspects of culture vanishing in front of our eyes number of aspect of culture number of material aspects non material aspects for example one non material aspect i will tell you the human values the respect certainly right we are creating a generation where the kids right they do not have respect for the elders <laughs> the general amount of value which we have over our next generation right with every passing generation it declines we don't know so there are number of material aspects which are also vanishing over time in the past 20 years or so i'll tell you one example i still remember in south india where rice is a staple food in every home they used to have a huge grinder made out of uh, stone a granite stone and manually it used to be too huge even 10 people cannot lift it very too huge it used to be and manually right women used to grind rice to make uh, the rice flour 
now with uh, the advent of technology now we have wet grinders it is completely mechanized and hardly even in villages now we cannot see this traditional uh, instruments which we used to for uh, making this rice flour or only one more example mm. typewriter so if you go to any district office complex from 20 years back there will be at least some uh, 10 or 15 shops where uh, people used to do the dtp work making the documents on 20 years back mostly it's not men women used to sit before the typewriters on the speed and the accuracy with which they type that they cannot edit it once when it is typed right they cannot edit it but the skill with which they had the skill right the skill of for typing the documents oh my god they won't even see what is there in the keyboard just by looking at the document they used to do and hardly there will be any error in that now with the advent of computers where we can edit the documents where we can uh, uh, redo it we can correct the errors now we are also losing the skills and at the same time we can see the typewriters only in museum now if we go to nehru museum in new delhi there right in uh, nehru's uh, office office row we can see one typewriter which he used during those time so only in museums right now we can see this thing so how fast the aspects of culture are vanishing but though the aspects of culture are vanishing or changing still there are few aspects of culture which will always remain with us for example sari sari is still a very popular traditional dress a very popular traditional dress okay though things have evolved much there are number of new dresses now okay however modern our girls are becoming still or if there is any important occasion they prefer to wear sari sari still remains so this is how though culture changes there will be some traditions which we will still carry so this is a very important aspect of culture culture is dynamic culture keeps changing one cannot just go and stop the evolution of culture and uh, in anthropology the study of culture revolves around one important concept that is ethnocentrism and uh, cultural relativism it is having prejudices over other culture so anthropology suggests that you should not be judgmental you should not have any prejudices while studying other culture and make it sure that you view culture from the native people's point of view or that particular people about whom right you are studying so you should not carry your own imagination about other culture the most interesting aspect of anthropology is also found in paper 2 where we discuss the traditional indian social system one good thing here is our examiners are so kind that they have included only the hindu traditional social system the buddhism origin buddhism jainism originated in our country islam is of more than 1000 years old even 1200 years old because it was not uh, the turkish invasion which brought islam into our country even prior to that somewhere around the 8th century the so called mopilas from africa the mopila muslim from africa they migrated to india they settled there along the western coast and they were indulging in trade in fact they were the first muslims to come to india to come on in india fine okay even christianity but uh, good we are going to study only the traditional hindu social system and there is no much of a philosophy here there is no much of philosophy here village studies so if somebody is born and brought up in village 
he will have good idea about uh, what is a judge money system what is a joint family what is caste system and future of caste system and uh, about every single aspect in paper 2 we all have idea and there is nothing new in paper 2 and one full part of paper 2 deals with tribal studies tribal studies in fact top uh, it is the study of these uh, tribes we call them primitive but this makes us understand what we are the way in which we are living this is totally unnatural and we are not supposed to live in this particular way just running 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 behind the money making money saving it for future generations and by the time we think about uh, doing something or enjoying with the money which you have made we will not have health to do that and we are not living with the nature everything around us is synthetic but on the other hand the people whom we call as uh, primitive people whom we call as illiterates they hardly but they do not bother but the way their way of living is altogether different from our way of living and the cooperative way in which they live really they are very very happy they don't have stress they do not bother that oh my god my neighbor had bought on bmw i'm still having this honda city when i will buy a land rover when i will buy a uh, mclaren no they are not going to bother they are not going to bother which phone the neighbor is having okay with whatever they have they have a very happy life and how their life after being attached with the nature and the environment in which they live how happy they are but we had our own prejudices over these people we considered they are illiterates they are underdeveloped and in the name of developing them and in the name of integrating them into our natural mainstream how we pulled them out of their comfort zone they were like uh, a prince there in a forest they were roaming there carelessly whatever they want they have it in their forest so they can survive there very easily they were so happy in the environment so whatever they need whatever they want to eat it is available in the forest for them and we considered they were uh, illiterate they were uneducated so we wanted to educate them okay come learn multiplication addition algebra differential calculus i don't know how many of us are using this algebra differential calculus uh, matrix etc in our day to day life and we consider only if you know this right we are illiterate on the other hand if you are left there in the middle of a forest and suppose if for a snake bites us a tribe who is living there he is better equipped yeah it's a snake right oh god it's a wet bite or a dry bite and if it is a wet bite is that snake a poisonous or not and if it is a poisonous snake what you are supposed to do there to save your life but we are not capable of doing that right we will simply shout on scream on at the time right up you ask for help 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 or oh, just snake so the entire part of about tribal studies right it uh, deals with uh, the tribal way of living and in the name of development how we destroy the traditional way of living how we pull them out of the comfort zone and how the multi purpose projects like industries um irrigation projects multi purpose dams so because of all these projects how these people had lost their livelihood how we forced them out of their home and in the name of resettlement how we managed to force them something which is totally something so external for them something very new for them so this is what we discuss in the chapter number 2 in paper 2 so this is what makes the subject very very interesting and from chapter number 1 
till chapter number 12 hardly there are any areas which is which you feel oh god this is so boring so boring okay so stay with us and about uh, the link for this particular course i think it will be available there in the common session so we'll make it in the common session okay so in this course duration will be uh, we'll try to finish it in four less than another four four and a half months uh close around uh, there will be close around 220 hours of learning where we'll apart from the subject we will also discuss about uh, the answer writing we we'll also focus on answer writing so how to make and also the proper pattern for the preparation so what you should read first what should follow that so everything right will be uh, briefing in this particular course and it is uh, a complete course right once when you finish it you will be comfortable with your option just keep it aside and you can just focus only on your general studies so stay tuned and um, soon we'll be launching our course in anthropology the comprehensive course for anthropology optional for upsc civil services examination okay once again i'm saying uh, the link for joining this course will be available in our comment section so thank you have a great day